I'm going to be talking to you guys about hornworms. Some questions you may have, how many to feed, what to feed the hornworms, how to take care of the hornworms, what to do when the hornworms get too big. We're gonna go over all of that. I quickly wanna go over how to store your hornworms. So when you purchase your hornworms, they may come like this. You've got a lid on top and then the food down here and little like, plastic stuff for them to climb on on the inside. A lot of people want to store their hornworms upright because like that's what we do with lids and containers. But you actually want to store your hornworms upside down. This allows for the poop to fall down to the bottom and then you can just open the bottom lid and then like that. And then you can dump out the hornworm poop pretty easily and it keeps it a little bit tidy and hopefully <laughs> not so smelly. So I asked you guys on Instagram to give me any questions you had about hornworms. A lot of them were similar, so I was like, hey, let me make a whole video. So we're gonna do like a Q&A of hornworms, <laughs> pretty much. So we'll start with the first question, which is how often do you feed them to your chameleons? Hornworms are pretty well known to be a treat for your chameleon, if you didn't know, now you know. What I do is I will feed one to two hornworms at a time, and I will do that two to three times a week. Now, I know that may seem like a lot of treats <laughs> in a week, but because hornworms go grow so fast, you kind of have to be quick about it. So I typically do one or two per meal, two or three times a week. What's the closest alternative? They are banned in the UK. The closest alternative I can think of would be a silkworm. They're both squishy worms, great for hydrating. A silkworm is healthier because they also have protein in them. Have you ever allowed one to pupate? So if you didn't know, a hornworm is actually a caterpillar and it goes into a worm, worm into a cocoon, which is called the pupa or pupate stage, and then it'll hatch into a hawk moth. So it'll look like a brown cocoon, like just what you learned in elementary school with butterflies. So yes, I have had my hornworms go into the cocoon pupate stage before, and I've actually hatched them into hawk moths, and I think we'll get into that a little bit later on. This is a popular question. Do you recommend hornworms for younger chameleons? And the answer is no. Two reasons. One being is that the hornworms get really big. They get too big for your chameleon. So the general rule of thumb is no feeder bigger than the width between their eyes. In hornworms, there's a slight exception because they are so squishy, so you can do maybe a little bit bigger than the width between their eyes. But the thing is, like hornworms just grow so, so, so quickly. So quickly. And so you won't be able to feed them off fast enough for a younger chameleon. So I... <laughs> What ended up happening to me is I bought them for Neptune when he was younger and I wasn't able to feed them off fast enough. So then I was just left with these like massive worms on this like little bitty chameleon. So then it ended up like they all ended up dying and then I had to like flush them down the toilet and it was very dramatic and very traumatic and very sad. So I wouldn't recommend buying hornworms until your chameleon's at least six months old, if not closer to eight months. So then you can feed them off over the course of like a week or two without the hornworms getting too big for them. Okay, this person said, my cam tried eating one, but it pinched his lip and he spit it out and now he won't eat them. So hornworms can and will bite. I think that was another question someone asked. So what I recommend is if you're feeding them to your chameleon, feed them by tongs or even better by hand, or if you can't hold them like me, put them on like the container lid and make sure your chameleon eats it head first. Because because they're pretty long, your chameleon kind of has to like take bites to get through the worm and if they bite the tail then the head will be like thrashing around and then they can like grip on to your chameleon and potentially cause some damage. So make sure you're feeding the worm head first because if they eat the worm head then they don't have to worry about the tail. Which brings me, I don't think anyone asked this but this is a frequent question, the horn on the hornworm is totally safe for your chameleon. People are like, should I cut off the hornworm? Is the horn, or cut off the horn? Is the horn dangerous? And the answer is no. It's, it's more for looks than anything else. It's not actually like dangerous, so don't worry about the horn. What to feed a hornworm? So hornworms come with their own food. That's gonna be this tannish looking stuff up here. This is commercial hornworm food, which is great. You don't need to feed them anything else. This food is sufficient for their gut load. No need to do anything else. However, a common problem that people have is that 
they will run out of this food. The worms will just gobble it all up and then you're like, oh no, what do I feed the worms? So what I will do if I run out of hornworm food is feed them carrots. That seems to work just fine. They will eat them no problem and then they actually have orange poop <laughs> by the end of it. So that's what I would recommend. Can you feed the cocoon? I'm gonna go with no. You're better off feeding the worm or the hawk moth. Do not feed the cocoon. Best place to buy them online. So there's a few different spots that you can buy them online if you don't have anywhere local to buy them. Um, I will leave a link down in the description below um, to the sponsors page of the chameleon forms. There's tons of places that offer hornworms. They're super, super common. I will say hornworms are on the pricier side, so just keep that in mind when you're shopping around, but that's where you can check out some online places. How long can you keep them before they, quote, go bad, end quote? Um, I would say approximately one and a half weeks. They're, they go, they get pretty big pretty fast and like they, they can die and rot and decompose and smell awful. So probably no more than, than two weeks. How many is too many in one day and how often should I give it to her? So we talked about how many you should feed and kind of how frequently and like, you know, there's little wiggle room for that. There is such a thing as feeding too many hornworms and this would result in overhydration or super watery poops. So make sure you're limiting the number of hornworms. I would say like I do two, that's just me, but you know, maybe you could do do three, but I really wouldn't do any more than that because then you're just gonna end up with some, some watery poops and a very, very full chameleon. This is a, a great question. What do you do with them when they get too big for your chameleon? They grow so fast. So being honest, hornworms don't get too big for my commands because they're all adults at this point, but I have had baby commands and juvenile commands, so I, I know the feeling. So what they do, what I do when they get too big is if my chameleon is like mm, six to eight months old, closer to eight months old, then I could feed them a hawk moth, which is the, the butterfly moth version of the hornworm, right? So what you can do is wait for the worm to turn into its cocoon or its pupate stage, and then you could have that hatch. So I've done it two ways. Once, when the worms got really, really big, I put some organic potting soil and like a cricket keeper, and then the worms will dig down, they'll hatch, like go into their cocoon, and then they'll hatch out. But I had my hawk moths have like some deformed wings doing that, so I'm currently experimenting with having them hatch in their enclosure, which is actually kind of nice because then when they hatch, they're already in there. I don't have to worry about transferring them. So I waited for them to turn into their cocoon stage, and then I put them into one of my potted plants. Um, or you just put the worm, the really, really big worm, in a potted plant, and then I think that'll help because it's constantly getting misted and it has high humidity, so hopefully it'll have um, fully, fully formed wings. But you can hatch out a hawk moth. I should mention, hawk moths get pretty big, probably like a wingspan of that big and a body about that big. Excellent feeder, but sometimes that can be too big for your chameleon, in which case you just have to kind of toss the hornworms. Um, so you can flush them down the toilet, toss them in the trash. Whatever you do, do not release your hornworms into the wild though. That's a very, very bad idea. And they'll destroy everyone's tomato plants, but I'm pretty sure they can become an invasive species maybe. Don't pull me on that. Point being, don't put them outside. Would you recommend hornworms for a two month old veiled chameleon? No. How do I stop them from growing because mine grew double the size in two days? Now that's what I'm saying, they grow super, super fast. One thing you can do to decrease their growth rate is to put them into the refrigerator. You could do this like every other day, one day in the fridge, one day at room temperature, one day in the fridge, one day at room temperature. I say every other day because most refrigerators are gonna be too cold for the hornworm and can actually kill them. So <laughs> be very careful with that. Why does their poop smell weird? <laughs> because their food smells weird. I know hornworms do have a smell to them. It's not so much the worm itself, it's the hornworm food has a smell and the hornworm poop has a smell. Um, but as long as you're regularly dumping out the poop and keeping them relatively clean, there shouldn't be any smell. Like it's not gonna fill up the house you know, with this weird hornworm smell, it's just gonna be isolated to just their container. Uh, but yeah, make sure you're just keeping them clean and you should be able to limit the smell. They get really big fast, so should you get a bigger container for them? The container size has nothing to do with 
the hornworm growth or anything like that. The container that they come in is totally fine for you to keep them in for their entire life until you feed them off to your chameleon. No need to transfer them. How did you get your cams to eat hornworms? Mine has zero interest and wasted a pack of 25. So, biggest thing with chameleons is making sure that they're moving around. Hornworms are pretty wiggly, so that shouldn't be too much of a problem. I would say the biggest reason why a chameleon would not be interested in hornworms is because the hornworm may be too big um, or too intimidating for the chameleon to try and tackle. I know that was an issue for Neptune when he was younger, that one time I tried to feed them too, <laughs> too early to him. So make sure that they're appropriately sized for your chameleon. Again, no bigger than the width between their eyes. Otherwise, you know, they may just not not like them. I wouldn't give up hope though. Um, Neptune one time ate a few and then didn't eat any of the others and I only had one chameleon at the time so I wasted all those hornworms. I gave it a couple months and I tried to feed him the hornworms again he gobbled them all up so that's great. How can I breed hornworms? I have no idea but I'm sure the internet does so feel free to check that out. That's not something I've ever tried to do. If they look too big for your cam, is it bad to cut them in half? I know it sounds gross. Um, yes, mostly because then they'll die and be dead and start decomposing and they get all black and, and gross. Another thing to mention is make sure you're supplementing your worms, just like you do all your other bugs. They should be dusted with the appropriate calcium or multivitamin, uh, just like you would for any other feeder. Okay, so that wraps up the Q&A. Most of the other ones were repeat questions, so hopefully I was able to answer your question. Just some pro tips, I guess, from things I've experienced. Do not leave the lid off of your worms. They will crawl out and they will crawl over your whole apartment, and then you have to try not step on blue worms and pick them all up and hope that you've got all of them. Another thing is that they will crawl out of feeder cups. So if you guys don't know, I use a bird feeder to feed my chameleons. If a hornworm gets too big and can climb out of it, it will. And then we'll end up in the enclosure. It's okay to free range your hornworms, like put one in the enclosure. Just know that a hornworm has a super, super strong grip. So there is a chance that you can cause damage to your chameleon's tongue. Say the worm is gripping really hard on a branch, your chameleon's tongue like latches onto the worm and isn't able to pull it back, then that can cause damage. Another thing is that hornworms are super, super squishy and you can be in the splash zone. Their guts will go flying everywhere, so just be careful. Um, you may get some hornworm guts on you. Oh, another thing. Hornworms are great for bonding with your chameleon. While there are some chameleons who don't like hornworms, I would say the vast majority think they're like candy. And so these are a great, great, great treat to build trust with your chameleon. I have a whole video on how to handle your chameleon and build trust with your chameleon, so I'll link that above here and in the description box below. Hopefully this gives you a good idea of where to buy them, how to take care of them, how to feed them to your chameleon, how often to feed them to your chameleon, when you should feed them to your chameleon, like at what age? So. I'm, I did answer a lot of questions, but I'm sure I missed some, so feel free to let me know down in the comments below any questions you might have about hornworms. I'll try to link some resources in the description, and also like check out the internet. You know, I'm not a bug expert. I just have fed many hornworms to my chameleons. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Feel free to subscribe to me when I post a new video, and you can follow Neptune and all my chameleons on Instagram at Neptune the Chameleon. Thank you so much for watching, and have a good day. Bye! Right? Happy little worms here. But what happens sometimes? Oh, you kidding me? Mister went off.